C-163, Mana Body. Cecilia sat outside Dirk's training room. She had been monitoring his progress as he had been steadily advancing each day. Although he had stopped asking for her help in teachings, she never stopped making sure that nothing went wrong. She knew he was trying to advance, so when the day came that he would need dense sources of mana, she made sure to be there. And on one particular day, almost seven months after Dirk had returned to Horizon with Pandora, Cecilia noticed some extreme changes. The training room Dirk was holed up in was located within the military base, holding the line at the forefront of that hellish battlefield. He had chosen this place because it was dense with fire mana. This way, he wouldn't need to use mana crystals in order to train. But suddenly, the normally dense fire mana began to fluctuate. Cecilia thought it was normal since such phenomena wasn't uncommon with Dirk training. But this time, the fluctuations were extreme. Then, she suddenly heard a signal in her mind. It was a signal that came from a bracelet on her wrist, one connected to an amulet she had given Dirk. He was to use it if he was advancing. It's time. She threw open the door to his training room. But once she did, she was hit with a wave of oppression. It wasn't too much for her to handle, taking a light amount of effort to resist with her physical body. But the issue was her soul, which felt like it was being suppressed. She felt her control over dark mana being relinquished. Then, she noticed the field around Dirk. The stone ground underneath him cracked and reformed in a cyclical manner. The air was ignited with dark flames that threatened to annihilate anything that touched them. The gravity bore down on her shoulders, making her feel several times heavier. And the atmosphere was electrified, making her feel like she would be struck with lightning at any moment. Domain. She smiled brightly, looking at her son who sat in the middle of this field. The space around him looked dark, and even she had a hard time making him out. Only by interfering with the domain would she get a clearer image of everything going on inside, but she naturally wouldn't do that. But regardless, based on her own comprehensions and what she was feeling from this domain, she could tell that it was utterly impeccable. Dirk had managed to merge the effects of all his elements perfectly, finding connections between them and splicing them together to form a singular manifestation of his power. She could tell that he had been working hard. He had studied his magic every single day for the past seven months, taking not a single day off. And now, this perfect domain was the fruit of his effort. She felt immeasurably proud, but she didn't forget that she was needed. Around Dirk was a rapidly forming cyclone of mana, sucking in everything around him. He needed mana, and lots of it. Everything within the training room was emptied in mere seconds, and soon enough, all the fire mana that flooded the atmosphere was being pulled toward him. Cecilia brought out mana crystals for all of his elements, activating them before streaming their mana toward him. These were clusters of tier 6 mana crystals, more than enough to his advancement, not to mention the tier 7 mana crystals she was secretly keeping on standby. After that, Cecilia could see Dirk's body open, not literally, but figuratively. From him, she could sense the depths of mana, another dimension that very few would ever be able to make contact with in their entire lives. The mana dimension, a place one could see their very soul. And when that dimension opened up, the already violent cyclone of mana turned relentless. Outside the base, a hurricane of fire mana was forming, caused by Dirk's ravenous need for mana. Everyone, including beasts, looked up and wondered what was causing such a massive disturbance. Because of that, a beast tide was triggered, causing the entire base to go on high alert as thousands of monsters flooded toward the mana surge. And while this was happening, Dirk was focused solely on his advancement. Within the mana heart technique, there were several runic formations that Dirk was required to form throughout each of his advancements. Each of his many mana hearts had been created with these increasingly complex formations, and back then, Dirk didn't know what they were meant to do. But when he started his advancement, he figured it out. Within the mana dimension, Dirk looked toward his soul. Within it was a large cavity divided into three sections, each section containing each of his elements and their specializations. But these changed. The entire cavity expanded and deepened as the pools of each element began to mix. At first, their mixture was chaotic, causing turbulence within his soul that caused pain. But with his comprehensions, each of the elements were forced to merge seamlessly stopping the pain and causing all three pools to become one. After that, Dirk formed another runic formation, 
one that his technique required him to do. But when he sunk this formation into his mana pool, it caused his mana to resonate. In the real world, each of Dirk's many hearts began to expand. Their barriers were dropped as they merged into one, mana fluctuating between all his elements and specializations constantly, forming one huge pool of resonating mana that filled his heart to the brim. In fact, so much mana was flowing in that it caused his heart rate to spike. Mana was flooded into his bloodstream, filing all his veins and causing his body to undergo abnormal changes. His skin heated up, his body became heavy, his hair saw arcs of electricity jump between them, while the darkness looked like it was poisoning him as it spread across his body like a black plague. Cecilia became worried, but she didn't dare interfere. She trusted Dirk, not that it comforted her. She didn't like seeing him suffer in any way. It was also a good thing that she had no idea what was truly going on within his body, otherwise she may just try to step in. Dirk sensed the changes the merging of his heart brought, and the most obvious thing was the activation of the runic formations he had planted within the mana pool. These runic formations came together, compounding off each other in order to create a singular formation far more complex than anything Dirk could currently form in one sitting. And this unbelievable formation expanded before enveloping his heart. Without the containers that were Dirk's many hearts, all his mana rampaged. But when this formation took effect, it imposed its will upon all the mana throughout his body, concentrating it within his heart to an atrocious level. For a moment, it created mana even denser than the tier 6 mana crystals in Cecilia's hands. And because of this, the mana took an almost tangible form. Dirk's heart was the most affected. It beat at dangerous speeds, trying to disperse the mana. But it only cycled more blood through that horribly dense mana. And this caused his blood to respond. Dirk heard an alert in his head from spite. Warning. Adaptable genes has been activated. Your blood is undergoing an evolution. Her warning came with a packet of information that came from her observations, but truthfully, Dirk didn't need it. He could sense everything clearly. He watched as all the blood cells that passed through his heart were either incinerated by his mana or enhanced. It was like his blood destruction, but on a whole other level. Anima oscillation destroyed things. Mana resonance was supposed to enhance things. So for his blood to be destroyed by mana resonance, meant that the mana within his heart was dangerously potent. But that was only half the reason. The other half was due to the formation. The impossibly complex formation that took control of his heart began to affect his blood cells, binding to clusters of them before sending them off. Its power caused some to be destroyed, but Dirk's blood was resilient. So most ended up passing and continuing into his bloodstream. And this modified blood that carried the runes of that formation seeped into his bones, causing changes within. This was when adaptable genes kicked in to its fullest. The bone marrow was modified, warping under the power of the formation and its genetic code being changed. The same thing happened in all the other facilities of his body like his organs and muscles. He was going through a complete evolution, all of it revolving around his blood, and his body was responsive to the changes. With the power of mana and his reformation skill, his body was broken down and reformed. It was immensely painful, but Dirk had no issue dealing with it. Like this, several changes within his body and soul occurred all at once. Dirk was slightly overwhelmed as he tried to keep track of it, but at some point, he just let his instincts take over as he bore with everything one by one. Luckily, there was one being that could easily keep track of everything going on while properly giving pompful explanations. Tear advancement detected. The Light Dragon Primordial, the one Pandora called Miss Record, responded to Dirk's changes with more than the usual robotic notifications. Multiple skills evolving, traits being generated. Alert, you have gained the trait. Mana blood, you have gained the trait. Mana bones, you have gained the trait. Mana organs, you have gained the skill. Mana assimilation, grade seven, dot. Alert, the traits. Mana bones, mana organs, mana lungs, and the skill. Mana assimilation are resonating. Adaptable genes applied. Alert. The aforementioned skills have been discarded. You have gained the trait. Mana body. The skill. Mana resonance. Grade 5. Has been evolved by the trait. Mana body. You have gained the skill. Mana manipulation. Grade 7. Alert. The skill. 
AI interface and its sub-aspect nanorobotic maintenance have been discarded. What? Dirk received a shock as the notifications reached this point. His AI interface had been with him since he was born in this world. It was what gave Spite her powers of artificial intelligence and, in combination with his nanites, was what allowed his body to heal and keep itself together with undying ability. The interface also came with all kinds of abilities that only computers of modern Earth could replicate. He could build perfect maps of locations and structures, could utilize its calculation abilities, enhance his combat by having it analyze opponents, and more. It was an invaluable tool that was a major part of his identity as a super soldier. But suddenly, it was discarded. He panicked, not at all willing to give this ability up. But then, he heard spite, and things started to make sense. It's affecting me too. Don't worry. It's evolving the Nanites and my connection with them. All right. He nodded and waited for the subsequent notifications. Sure enough, they came. The discarded skill is merging with the skill. Reformation. Grade 6, da. The trait. Mana body is causing a mutation. The trait. Cybernetic enhancement is causing a mutation. Alert. Cybernetic enhancement cannot fuse with mana body. Applying adaptable genes. Fusion failed. As the notifications popped up, Dirk felt several changes in his body. It was like all his organs were churning, trying to find a new configuration, but failing. It was unbearably uncomfortable making Dirk vomit, but by now, all the contents of his stomach were incinerated. Instead, dead blood was spilled, appearing black and pouring from his mouth. To the side, Cecilia's eyes widened, but she still didn't step forward despite all her motherly instincts telling her to. Dirk saw more notifications. Alert. Suppressing mana body. The trait. Cybernetic enhancement is causing a mutation. Applying adaptable genes. Applying the skill. Anima oscillation, grade 6, da. Consuming the skill. Reformation. Success. At some point, Dirk felt his body reach an equilibrium. His organs stopped churning while the mana calmed. Each of his cells felt like they were exploding with vitality, and he could feel every minute change as if he were personally commanding all the cells in his body to multiply and repair. You have gained the skill. Active biokinesis, grade 8, da. Alert. An evolution of the skill. Anima oscillation, grade 6, is not possible without further comprehension. Alert. The stigma. Black Cat of Calamity has undergone a mutation. The stigma has been granted skills. At the same time, Dirk felt his connection to Spite cut off for a moment. It was like she suddenly went into hibernation. After that, things began to calm down. The massive pit within Dirk's soul that had been constantly sucking in mana finally reached its maximum capacity. No longer did a cyclone cause a mana hurricane within the skies above the base. The mana surging throughout his body and within his heart also returned to its baseline. Now, although his heart was close to becoming a mana crystal itself, the exploding mana no longer destroyed his insides. However, the changes it caused couldn't simply be surmised under the singular trait called mana body. Dirk would need to spend some time picking out all the new details. But, after plenty of time passed, Dirk was allowed to settle. Within the mana dimension, Dirk's soul closed itself off, sealing the massive mana pool that was several times larger than before. But he didn't immediately leave. Instead, he heard a voice. Congratulations. A qualitative advancement. Your future is endless. The dark dragon primordial, coiled around his soul, turned and smiled at him. The mana technique you use seems to closely resemble the structure of a dragon's heart. It must be building you toward that end. Continue on this path, and your magic will not fall behind your skill in physical combat. And now, you can continue to advance your body refining. Your next step is to reforge your bones, forming the symbol of integrity. Just don't kill yourself doing so, even if the pain makes you want to. The dark dragon finished with a snicker before retreating, returning to a hibernating state. Dirk felt a headache coming on. He had no issue with pain, but it was still pain. It wasn't as if he liked it. With that, he was done. He took a glance at Eldritch who still sat within the bottomless depths of darkness. Dirk's domain had actually increased the depth of his territory. Before, it had been around 230 meters deep. But now, due to his advancement and the formation of his domain, 
it had actually increased by an entire 70 meters, making it 300 meters deep. The power open to Dirk had increased at an exponential rate with every meter gained, and the benefits didn't stop there. Instead, they compounded with Dirk's new ability to transform one element into another. This meant that, regardless of whether there was mana in the atmosphere or not, he could generate mana for himself from the dark source mana. Of course, it was naturally slower than sucking in all the mana from the atmosphere, but it was a source that could never be cut off, making it much more reliable. With that, he left the mana dimension, returning his consciousness to his body. Everything around him calmed, every little bit of mana returning to him and his domain disappearing. Dirk felt like opening his eyes, but when he remembered he couldn't, he sighed and observed the mana around him, and the sight shocked him. Before, Dirk's mana vision had been completely clear. He could discern all kinds of details about his surroundings from the elements without any distortions. He could even see into the distance, albeit with limited range. But now, everything seemed to transform. It was like he had gained another set of eyes, and from a glance, it was like he could see individual particles of mana, all of them forming impossibly clear images of everything around him. The difference was like looking through a camera versus actually having eyes. And in fact, that's exactly what he'd been doing this entire time. Dirk merely observed mana through the lens of his soul, which controlled mana. Everybody could do it, but he had been forced to hone it to an amazing degree in order to compensate for his lost eyes. But that didn't make him omniscient. In the end, it was still only his mana sense, something every mage was good at and developed. In fact, Pandora wasn't much worse than him in this regard. She just didn't hone it to such a precise degree. But now, it was like those mere senses had turned into an actual receptive organ. It was like his entire body had become an eye. He could actually see mana in a literal sense. And more than that, the details he gleaned from the surrounding mana was far greater than before. It was like his sight had returned. He could see the colors of the dull walls of the training room, the red stone underneath the cracked floors he sat atop of, and the slightly pale skin of his mother who watched him worriedly from the doorway. He could also see many of the details about his mother's body. He could see heat spread from her chest with every beat of her heart, the electricity sparking through her muscles, and much more. If not for the fact that he wasn't exactly comfortable with seeing his mother in what was practically the nude, he would analyze further. It seemed he'd have to go find Pandora for that. Regardless, his mana vision had truly become exactly that. The level it had risen to couldn't be compared to before, and that was just the beginning. There was too much for Dirk to analyze in regard to the changes in his body, so for now, he decided to comfort his worried mother who could barely seem to wait another second. C-164, settle. Hi mom. Dirk, are you finished? Yes. It went well and I'm fine. Are you sure? Seeing that she was in the green, Cecilia couldn't help but move over and check her son's condition. Dirk just smiled and let her. At the same time, he noticed the large pool of dried black blood underneath him and staining his clothes. Perhaps that's what had her worried. Don't worry, I've healed from everything. There was just a small change that caused my stomach to churn. What kind of change? Well, I guess I can't call it small, but I'll try explaining. Saying that, Dirk wanted to describe the skill and trait changes. But before he did that, he called for his status. Profile. Name. Dirk Strider. Species. High Human. Tier. V. Rank. Attributes. Fire. 100%. Lightning. 100%. Earth. 100%. Metal. 100%. Dark. 100%. Traits. Cybernetic Enhancement. Adaptable Genes. Pure Soul. Mana Body. Skills. Active Biokinesis. Grade 8. Mana Manipulation. Grade 7. Anima Resonance. Grade 6. Stigma. Black Cat of Calamity. Stigma Skills. Magic Form. Pistol. Magic Form. Runic Simulation. Symbiotic Intelligence. Processing. Familiar. Obsidious. Familiar Skills. Symbiotic Armor. Living Flame. Living Gloves. Pocket Dimension. Molding. It seems my tier has surpassed my rank. Dirk pondered curiously. He had noticed that his advancement had gone very well. Almost too well, in fact. The changes were vast, and he directly shot into the middle level of Tier 5. 
Perhaps all his skills and his body had been primed for this change, and the advancement was the trigger. But Dirk felt that he had been affected by the Light Dragon Primordial who oversaw his status in the first place. After all, it had directly told him that his mana body was suppressed when it was combining skills to form biokinesis. This wasn't something he did himself, or something that happened naturally, so there was obvious external influence. Regardless, this advancement brought his magic power forward several levels, and he wanted to make sense of exactly what these changes entailed. Luckily, it was like the record could read his mind. When he wanted to know about his mana body trait, information about it popped up. Mana body a body perfectly suitable to host mana on the genetic level. Your blood, organs, and other bodily systems have been altered, enhanced, and bound with mana. A mana body can perfectly merge with its domain. A mana body is resistant to all forms of magic attacks or interference. A mana body is also naturally enhanced in every respect, the natural processes and strengths of the body supplemented by mana. When it comes to controlling or containing mana, the mana body knows no equal. Dirk read through the description, and he was surprised. It seemed that he didn't simply gain something like mana blood, like Spite had predicted. Instead, his entire body underwent a change, becoming entirely adapted to mana. Now, things like mana blood, mana lungs, and a mana heart were all a given. Every organ, every muscle, and every bodily system was now enhanced by mana. This naturally meant that every aspect of controlling mana was boosted. The most noticeable change Dirk noticed was to his mana vision. And with all the feelings of power, he was itching to cast some magic. But he stifled the eagerness and got a description for the other skills. Active biokinesis, a skill that liberates the user's genetic code. Its capabilities are threefold. It opens the gateway between the mind and body allows complete bodily restoration and regeneration according to baseline DNA, and adjusts the body's parameters to peak levels according to species. Primarily, this ability allows the user to control the various aspects of their body. Examples include controlling digestion, enabling perfect proprioception, and actively repairing or reinforcing injuries, mana manipulation, a skill that enables the perfect and unrestrained manipulation of mana without any barriers between the soul and body that may inhibit magical flow, mana and its elements can be manipulated by mere thoughts and with perfect precision. Dirk read through the descriptions, thinking about how these skills were quite amazing. And in fact, he could feel the abilities of these skills, like biokinesis. He intuitively knew that he could outright stop his stomach from digesting things. He could also cause his body to release adrenaline, activate specific muscle fibers instead of entire groups, and enhance certain body processes by devoting more resources and energy to them. He could even control his blood flow to some extent. But the abilities of this skill went beyond even these things. However, controlling the finest details of this skill required impossibly precise processing, something that could only be done by spite. He would have to wait for her to wake up. But in the meantime, he described all the changes to his mother, who gradually went mute out of disbelief. After a minute of silence, she sighed. My wonderful child, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but you're a monster. I myself have the anima manipulation skill, and it is the basis for my bishop class aura. But I only got it after my rank 7 advancement. And the only thing I know about mana manipulation, its counterpart, is that only the best enchanters in the world have the skill. Otherwise, it's unheard of, let alone found to be in the possession of someone only at tier 5. As for mana body, Cecilia frowned, scanning Dirk's body. Your mana is perfectly concealed. Not even I can see through you. Looking at you through my mana senses is no different from my eyes looking at you. I simply can't glean anything other than what's on the surface. The only thing I can pick up is the faint mana density of someone barely at tier 5, but otherwise, there's a wall. It's quite amazing. The only people who have given me similar feelings are those tier 8 monsters of the Empire. Perhaps they have a mana body too. Maybe. Dirk didn't doubt it. He wasn't under the impression that these skills, besides those tailored for his cybernetics, weren't in the possession of anybody else. Of course, those who may have such skills would likely be incredibly powerful, but regardless, they surely had them. In fact, perhaps a trait like mana body was a prerequisite for becoming a tier 8. After all, 
The mana densities at that kind of level were so high that anything but a mana body may be destroyed under such power. In that case, every tier 8 would have it. It wouldn't be surprising if talented tier 7s also had it. Dirk also guessed that it may be the same situation for mana manipulation. But for him to have such skills was still unbelievable. He even had biokinesis, a grade 8 skill worthy of someone at rank 8. Of course, he also had the grade 7 skill AI interface when he was just a child, but nonetheless, Cecilia genuinely believed that in terms of talent, her child was monstrous. He was far above Viola and Ethan. Perhaps only Rita could hold a candle to him, and even then, Dirk didn't lack anything she had. It was to the point that she began to question the nature of Dirk's existence. His talent was so unbelievable that it couldn't be explained by his alien origin. After all, even with Dirk's life on Earth, he wasn't even half of Cecilia's age. And yet, after being able to cultivate mana and refine his body for what was amounting to a mere seven years, he was already surpassing her old records. At this rate, if he didn't hit a wall, he wouldn't even be 30 before he became more powerful than her. So although she knew that Dirk's talent was atrocious, she still felt that there was something else there. Perhaps it had something to do with the War Cataclysma and his contact with the dragons. Perhaps the powers of this world, having brought his soul here in the first place, were pushing him toward those heights. And because he was dabbling in such deep waters, Cecilia was beginning to feel the threat. Not to herself, but to Dirk. She felt like he was drifting into something he wouldn't be able to handle, and it scared her. So with his advancement, her sense of urgency increased by several times. If she wanted to be able to protect her child until he could protect himself, she would need to reach higher herself. And Dirk had actually inspired her. If a mana body was supposedly necessary to reach tier 8, then perhaps she needed to develop an anima body to reach rank 8. She already had anima manipulation, so if she could gain that trait while advancing her aura to king class, then she should be able to push past the boundary, becoming a true hegemon in this world. Of course, it was easier said than done. To become a king class required one to seemingly defy the laws of the world, which was never casually done. Every king was an untouchable existence who was both unfathomably powerful and unfathomably smart. The only person Cecilia ever felt could assuredly reach the king class was Dirk, and that was only because of his atrocious talent. Calming her thoughts, she took a deep breath. With Dirk's advancement, he would surely be leaving soon. Cecilia remembered that Pandora was also trying to advance, and surely she didn't take as much time as Dirk did. But either way, Dirk had work to do, so she didn't keep him. Dirk stepped out of the training room with his mother. When he walked outside, he noticed that it was dark. He had started his day's training in the morning, so he wondered how much time had passed. How long did my advancement take? H.M., about two days. Huh. Dirk stopped in his steps, looking dumbly at his mother. My sense of time isn't that bad. Hee hee, I'm not joking. You sat in that room for two days straight. In fact, given another six hours, it would be three days. Also, you caused quite the commotion. A beast tide was triggered from your disturbance, and the base was raided for a couple days until your mana calmed down. I had to personally stop the base's commander from throwing you through a portal in order to get rid of you. Oh, sorry. Dirk apologized, but he couldn't help the smile. His advancement was just too good to apologize for. After giggling, his mother suddenly tilted her head. Now that Dirk was standing, she noticed that he looked different. Did you get taller? Did I? I think you did. At least several inches. Your muscles look bigger too. Hmm. Dirk lifted his arm, flexing all the muscles of his forearm and watching them ripple under his skin. He knew his body extremely well, so he knew that all his muscles were indeed bigger. They were also much stronger compared to before. Body refiners, without anima, all actually had basic strength. An anima didn't make you ripped or create big muscles. It simply multiplied the base strength of your body when applied. But it was obviously better to have stronger muscles in order to facilitate greater power output. Weak muscles could only handle so much anima. So strengthening your body beyond merely raising your rank was important. And now, Dirk had just become significantly stronger than before. It could be said that his body was the perfect vessel for anima on top of mana. His adaptable genes were evolving him into someone who could perfectly take advantage of this world's magic systems. Not only that, 
he noticed that he was looking down on his mother from a greater height than before. He really did get taller. Before, at 16 years old, Dirk had grown to be about 6 feet tall. When he turned 17, he had grown another inch or so. But now, he had shot up in height once more. He was at least 6 foot 5 inches tall. That was about as tall as his father, who was one of the tallest people he knew besides the dwarven generals Umangit and Feller who were around 7 feet tall. And Dirk could tell that he wasn't done growing. Active biokinesis gave his body parameters at the pinnacle of the human species. In fact, he had noticed how his listed species on his profile was no longer simply human, but high human. It reminded him of Pandora who was a high vampire. It seemed these pinnacle parameters made him taller and stronger. His hair was also quite a bit longer, having grown out during his advancement, and there were some other changes to his body, ones not so immediately obvious but surely something Pandora would try to enjoy. And he wasn't talking about his blood that had also become far richer. She's already been trying to get me in bed. Just need to survive a while longer. Dirk muttered in his mind. Over many months, he no longer had any reservations toward Pandora, but he wasn't willing to take that final step to her great displeasure. She frequently complained about him blue-balling her, because apparently that was possible, and made no shortage of attempts to get in his pants. Now that the present was bigger, she would no doubt want to open it even more. HM, the hormones are stronger too. That'll make it more difficult to resist. But I need to hold on. I can't close before I settle both accounts. Dirk sighed. He almost wanted to head straight to the Unity Empire and find Ava. He found it more difficult to wait with every week that passed. But unfortunately, they had business in the Elven territories. So that was their priority. He would have to wait another long while before he got to see her. And if she had moved on by then, so be it. But if she was waiting for him, then he needed to try to work things out. After seeing Alec and his growing number of girlfriends for so long, Dirk was no longer uncomfortable with the thought of having both Pandora and Ava by his side. But Ava needed to be okay with it. If she hated him because he showed up with Pandora, he could only blame himself. Shaking his head, Dirk cleared his mind of negative thoughts before walking to the walls of the base. Looking over the edge, he could see rivers of corpses, many of which were burning like wildfires after being lit on fire by the surrounding lava. But the walls still stood tall. It was clear that they had no issues defending against the monster tides. The lack of monsters made Dirk sad though. He was eager to test out his new abilities, itching to let out the explosive power bubbling up inside of him. It seemed like he would need to stifle those urges. With a sigh, he turned away from the wall and walked off to take care of business. One thing he noticed when he finished his advancement was a message from Pandora. Exos had finally created not only the security processor, but a processor capable of driving the Sky King that they needed to steal. She had spent too long preparing to steal it. It was practically within their grasp already. By simply activating everything, they would be able to walk in and walk out with a new airship. And now, since Dirk had advanced, their chances of doing so were practically guaranteed. After saying goodbye to his mother, Dirk headed back to the capital and made his way to Pandora's residence. It was finally time to get out of this empire. C-165, infiltrate. Whoa, I'm getting horny already. Good God. Dirk muttered with a baffled expression. He had barely walked through the door and Pandora was talking dirty. He saw her figure lounging on the couch within this apartment of hers. It was her residence after she started working at the airship facility. And only he was allowed to visit, because whenever he did so, he arrived with the utmost secrecy. Anything that could threaten the integrity of her fake identity had to be eliminated. She didn't even call Exos with her communication orb without casting several encryption and isolation spells. Stifling thoughts of just walking out, Dirk sighed and closed the door behind him. He then stood before Pandora as she took a long look at him. Her words earlier had mainly been joking. She often said stuff like that when he came over, knowing that it was a great way to tease him. But after taking a minute to see his changes, her expression gradually turned excited. She bit her lip, her smile widening until she could barely hold back a laugh. I see you've advanced. And my oh my, how I'm loving the changes. So you like tall guys. What girl doesn't like a tall man to dominate her? It's practically written into our DNA. Just like how a man's DNA compels him to ravage his woman at any moment possible. By the way, this just happens to be one of those moments. 
You're really making this difficult for me. Dirk's lip twitched as he smiled weirdly. He noticed that active biokinesis, after raising his bodily parameters to their pinnacle, also caused his hormones to rage. It took a lot out of him to control himself, especially when he saw Pandora, not to mention with the extreme fidelity and intimacy of his new mana vision. She could hide nothing from him. Every outline and curve of her body was put on full display. Right now, as it was late at night, she was dressed in a thin nightgown, so her clothes did very little to block his mana vision. Only thicker clothes would be able to somewhat block his vision, but even then he could get a general outline. So the sight of her exquisitely voluptuous body was a tad bit stimulating. Plus, he could more clearly sense her powers of seduction. It was like this aura around her soul that drew him to her. He knew that it didn't work on him, especially now, but if he didn't watch himself, it was still a spiral he could fall into. Dirk cleared his throat before deciding to take a seat. After that, he took another glance at Pandora. That's when he looked a little closer, having noticed something. The mana within her body was denser, having jumped a level. There was also this barrier of mana under her skin, one fluctuating with all of her elements and specializations. Dirk suddenly realized, like him, she had formed her domain and advanced to tier 5. Only, because she was completely relaxed right now, her domain wasn't hiding the details of her body, allowing him to see it. Not only that, but her body seemed to be enhanced by mana. He could see mana flowing through her purple hair, making it glow, and her red eyes pierced his body with mysterious power. Her body also seemed a bit larger. When he recalled her usual proportions, he compared and realized that not only was she taller, but her bust was a bit bigger and her waist a bit slimmer. Some of her muscles also seemed to have tightened, like her abs and legs. Dirk suddenly found himself staring, and when he noticed Pandora's grin, he caught himself and looked away. You advanced as well. Yes. In the few weeks that you were gone, I decided I should really focus on pushing through the last barrier. And I was naturally successful. My advancement enhanced my body to a large degree, making me taller and more beautiful. Of course, this made me worry that I had gotten as tall or taller than you. So I was really happy when you walked in even taller than before. Hmm. You do look to be about six foot. Six foot one inch. And from a cursory measurement, you look to be about six feet six inches. Pandora's eyes flickered as she nodded with approval. Your chest is bigger. Your legs are bigger. Just a glance at your forearms and I know they're bigger. Your face also seems sharper and your hair grew out quite a bit. Not a bad look if you sweep it back and don't you dare cut it. I want to try you out with long hair. Pandora pointed with a serious but happy expression. She really was liking his changes. Of course, nothing had changed to a great degree. He would still be recognized by everyone he knew. It was just that everything had been enhanced. In fact, everyone who cultivated great power underwent these changes. Dirk's adaptable genes only made it happen faster and boosted the effects. Still, for him and Pandora who came from a world where very little of that was possible, all these changes were rather novel. Suddenly, Pandora stood and walked over to Dirk. He sat there unmoved as she reached out her hand and extended a finger, brushing it against his cheek. HM, some scruff. Looks like you'll grow a nice beard. You like beards? I don't mind them. I think you would look better with a short and sharp cut, rather than a long and bushy one. <clears throat> now, as for this, she moved forward, her mouth closing in on his neck. But that's when Dirk stopped her advance. He seemed conflicted. Not right now. Oh, is there any particular reason? For both our sakes, Dirk answered vaguely. He didn't want Pandora to get too excited, especially when she already seemed riled up by his mere appearance. If she got a taste of his blood, enhanced and richened several times over by his advancement, he really wouldn't be able to hold her back. Unfortunately, his words only served to prime her as she smiled widely. I can't imagine what happened to your blood after your advancement. Yeah, the anticipation. My, you're really making this difficult for me. She repeated his earlier words, but at the same time, lowered herself for a kiss, as if to settle for the next best thing. Dirk didn't reject it, the two swapping tongue for a minute or so before Pandora pulled back. Hmm, you're really not gonna let me claim you yet, huh? Not yet. Shame. I can't seem to completely surpass a childhood sweetheart. Well, 
I guess that stubborn heart of yours is one of your good points. She let out a light breath across his face before standing and going back to lounging on the couch. Her words made him sigh as she did so. All right, time for business. Now that we've both advanced, we have the processors, and all my bombs have been planted, this operation should commence. This means we can leave at any moment, and as soon as we do so, coming back to Horizon will be difficult in the near future. We've been here for seven months now. I hope you've concluded everything you needed to. Just about. Dirk gave confirmation. While he had spent most of his time training, he had also spent a lot of time honing his skills, spells, and aura. He also spent a lot of time with his family and Alec. In anticipation for his leave, he also acquired tons of knowledge on the various empires of the world, like the Elven World Tree, Hybrid Unity, and even the Fairy Kingdoms. He would be more educated when he went there, which was always important. There was nothing keeping him from leaving at any moment, and given the urgency of their mission, he didn't want to stick around for any longer. Hearing that, Pandora nodded. Good. In that case, we begin our little operation in two days. In that time, we need to prepare exos for extraction while I begin putting all our contingencies into effect. Also, I need you to go over all the information regarding the facility. I can't be the one to bypass the security, so you'll need to carry everything out. This means that you'll be following me in tomorrow to familiarize yourself. All right. Dirk readily accepted her plans. His stealth had taken another leap forward with his jump to tier 5, and with his mana body, mana manipulation, and domain, he would be surprised if even tier 8s could sense him. After that, he discussed some more details with Pandora before retiring for the night. Of course, he wasn't allowed to leave her room for the night. They hadn't seen each other for a while as Dirk was focused on advancing. So Pandora was hungry for a bit of intimacy. And Dirk had no qualms. Ever since he had let her wear down the walls of his heart and nest a place within, he no longer had any misgivings about their relationship. He was completely open to her. And the only thing he wasn't willing to do was take that final step. But otherwise, he was all for it. So that night, he went to sleep rather content and with a beautiful woman in his arms. All right, let's do this. Pandora cheered as they left the residence. Today, Dirk would follow her into the highly secure facility. It would require him to bypass several locks and alarms, utilizing both the security processor and his own stealth ability. His timing, movements, mana concealment, and execution would need to be perfect. He had extensive information on all the formations and enchantments guarding the place, and they were all high-end. This was especially so for everything surrounding the Sky King, which was a top-secret government project, but this kind of stuff was exactly what he and Pandora were good at. On Earth, they had been enemies working against each other. Pandora would steal all kinds of things, and Dirk would need to stop her or retrieve items. But now, they were working together. They were an impossibly dangerous duo. Even without Exos, they would have found a way to steal the Sky King anyway. His processors only made things easier and enabled them further. As Pandora walked out of her apartment, she looked to be alone. There was nobody near her and nobody that responded to her words. But by her side, Dirk was following closely. When it came to these kinds of matters, he was completely focused. The switch was flicked and he was locked in. Like that, the two of them made their way to the facility. Dirk observed it as they got close. Located on the outskirts of the capital, the grounds of this facility were composed of a few warehouses, some hangars, and a large factory. It was guarded well, and the premises were secured by a large wall. Atop these walls were some spiked fortifications, like barbed wire that acted as deterrent. And there was one gate with a checkpoint that everyone needed to go through in order to enter. All personnel had special ID plates that verified their identity. Pandora had one of these, a genuine plate created with a fake identity. Walking up to the gate, she was greeted enthusiastically by the guards. Despite Pandora sporting a completely different face, hair color, eye color, and general features, she still decided that she wanted to look beautiful. This combined with her amazing social skills made her extraordinarily popular. Entering the checkpoint building, Pandora tapped her plate against a scanner before proceeding into an open scanning chamber. She allowed it to wash her with magic for a moment before it flashed and let her through. Right as it flashed with confirmation, though, Pandora felt her soul connection fluctuate. She could barely feel how Dirk had slipped through at the moment of verification, taking advantage of a split-second vulnerability to pass through. She smiled while leaving the chamber, 
officially entering the facility. Freya. Suddenly, there was a shout. Pandora glanced to the side, seeing a middle-aged man walk over. He was dressed in luxurious clothes that surpassed the norm of all the other workers. He was clearly high up in the ranks, and Dirk sensed the power of a tier 6. Yet, he didn't notice anything abnormal. Ah, Kindrum. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Heading to the hangars? I am. I'll be doing more work on the Sky King. Ah, I see. Another day of tuning over paperwork. Indeed. Pandora gave the man a smile, and at the same time, Dirk was evaluating him. He was a rather charming man, clearly older than Pandora. But in this world, age didn't matter that much when everyone powerful lived a few hundred years. But although Pandora was smiling, Dirk could sense her displeasure. It seemed she really didn't like this man. Not that it would ever show on her face. She was too good at hiding her real emotions. Care to join me for lunch? I'm sorry, Kindrum, but I have to pass on that today. I have loads of work to do, including some stuff from yesterday. Oh, then would you like some help? I have some free time. No, no. I need to take care of this myself. I happen to be trying to impress my boss, so I can't say that I was shirking my duty. I understand. Then at least let me bring you some food. I insist. Dirk watched as Kendrum continued, getting a small glimpse of why Pandora wouldn't like this guy. Eventually, though, Pandora was able to shake him off. After saying their goodbyes, she continued on to the research basement. The entire time, her smile never disappeared, as if she enjoyed speaking to Kendrum and greeting all the others that passed her by. Dirk could tell that everything she was doing was fake, but it was always completely hidden. He suddenly felt a bit bad. She had been doing this for several months, dealing with this environment and sacrificing time to train. Well, it would all be worth it for what they were about to acquire. Following in her footsteps, Dirk watched as she approached the smallest hangar of the three. Around them were two other hangars, ones that occasionally received or released airships. But this one wasn't active. It was the home of the Sky King, and Dirk was finally able to see it after so long. After bypassing another security gate, they entered the hangar. Within, Dirk saw the Sky King. It was the culmination of decades of constant research and improvement. The Sky King was a massive ship at least 60 meters tall, 70 meters wide, and 150 meters long. It was nothing short of a flying fortress, armed with all kinds of defensive weaponry and covered in intricate armor. It had a rounded underside, not completely unlike a boat, which was covered in layered armor plates that glowed with runes. At its front was a pointed nose while its back carried magic propulsion systems, not unlike a rocket. Finally, its main body was what gave it the look of a flying fortress. With such a size, it could naturally carry and contain all manner of items and house all sorts of facilities. It had everything you would find in a mansion like living areas, kitchen areas, bathing areas, and more. Since it was built with the intention of carrying and hosting powerful people, it leaned more toward luxury. But it also had several military facilities like a command center, armory, weapon control center, and more. Despite being luxurious, it was still a war machine. And to power all of it were two magic reactors designed to provide power for long periods of time. It was similar to an aircraft carrier from Earth in that regard. But instead of a uranium nuclear reactor, the two reactors within the Sky King ran on a Tier 7 Fire Mana Crystal and Tier 8 Air Mana Crystal. The two reactors chained their powers together to not only generate copious amounts of power for all kinds of facilities, but provide power to the propulsion systems. Like rockets from Earth, this ship combined the two elements with a series of combustive reactions to push it forward. But not only that, the Air Mana Crystal allowed the shift to slip through the atmosphere with zero resistance. Of course, the details went even deeper. For example, it had three modes of flight, each one utilizing different systems like combustion, levitation, and even spatial warping. But they all had their limitations, and Dirk didn't know many of the specifics. Regardless, all of the Sky King's facilities and its extraordinary parameters made it a behemoth in the sky. With this, not only would Dirk and Pandora secure a fast mode of transportation, but they would have a mobile base of operations. There was no reason they couldn't live in this ship for the long term as they traveled the world. However, because it was such an amazing marvel of magical engineering, it was naturally heavily guarded. The place Pandora entered within the hangar 
didn't even let them into the same room with the Sky King. It was merely a side room devoted to analysis and research. All the problematic security measures were located at the entrance to the room that held the Sky King. Even from where he was, Dirk could sense the impossibly intricate and powerful enchantments on one of the gates. Very few people went through this gate at all, let alone frequently. And he could tell that it wasn't as loose as the other gates. He wouldn't be able to slip through with Pandora. He would need to use the security processor to crack it before entering. And that was precisely his job. As he and Pandora discussed beforehand, there were myriads of remote controls and locks within secure rooms around the Sky King. They would need to disengage these locks and mechanisms while simultaneously activating all of Pandora's planted hijacks within the Sky King itself. Dirk was responsible for operating the mechanisms and locks, and Pandora would activate the hijacks on the ship. But before all that, they arrived in Pandora's small office. Within was a desk, some boards with all kinds of research material, and stacks of papers on her desk. After closing the door, she took a deep breath. All right, it's time. Stick to the plan. We should be able to slip out underneath the nose of that Tier 7. But in case we don't, be prepared to blast our way out. I've already prepared enough explosives to level this place, let alone cause a distraction. If chaos is necessary, then let it ensue. But until that moment, we can try being discreet. Saying that, she glanced over at the empty space beside her and smiled. Now, let's begin the mission. It's about damn time. Dirk's voice echoed before Pandora felt her faint soul connection disappear. Just like that, Dirk had gone completely dark, and she moved out, magic drifting around her fingers, ready to put all of her intricate plans into motion. C-166, Steel. Dirk made his way through the hangar. Along the way, nobody had the slightest clue that he was there. Not even the several-tier SIXS noticed him. It didn't matter if his shoulder brushed by theirs, he was completely imperceptible. Soon, he arrived outside a door. This door had several locking mechanisms, and people passed through here even less than through the gate to the Sky King. After all, the mechanisms to remotely control it couldn't be accessed by just anybody. And it was precisely these secure barriers that Dirk needed to use the security processor for. He reached into a pocket, taking out a large metal cube. After pressing a button, the dozens of hexagonal and triangular pieces that composed its body all shifted and unfolded, turning it into a device with several claws and platforms. He placed it against the door before activating it. Like that, the processor adhered to the surface before adjusting itself and glowing with thousands of intricate runes and enchantments. The processor detected the type of security formation and launched its own program to hack it. With its vast processing power, the security enchantment of the door didn't stand a chance. After several seconds, the processor suddenly flashed, indicating that it had obtained clearance and could open the door. Dirk looked around for a second before confirming there was nobody around and letting it activate. The door then flashed and slid open. No alarms, no hassle. Just like that, Dirk had breached one of the most secure rooms in this entire complex. Taking the processor off, he slipped in and observed. The room wasn't large. There were three large screens on top of a control panel, and above that control panel was a large window that gave a clear view of the Sky King from above. Currently, the Sky King wasn't powered. There was no need to waste energy all the time, so it was often left in standby mode. After Dirk entered the room, several lights flickered on while the three large screens glowed to life. After a few moments, they displayed all sorts of information about the Sky King, including the status of its systems, the mechanisms to control those systems, and the locks that restrained it. Dirk didn't touch the locks for now. Instead, he looked at the list of mechanisms and flicked the power switch, taking it off of standby. Whir. The Sky King let out a momentary fluctuation as power flowed through its body. Because it was in standby and not completely turned off, it didn't cause a ruckus. This was one of Pandora's plans in action as she had long ago gotten her superiors to maintain the ship in a constant state of semi-readiness for testing purposes. Either way, it was helping them now. Without attracting any attention, the Sky King was fully powered. At the same time, Pandora made her way into the hangar, boarding the Sky King, quickly heading to several areas within it, and placing down small cubes. These cubes were all miniature processors from Exos, 
They were limited in function and mainly acted as transmitters that connected to a nexus which would control everything. Each of these transmitters were connected to secret enchantments on every crucial system of the Sky King. Pandora had planted these enchantments across many months, and now, the transmitters would activate them, taking complete control of the ship. Having to cross between several different levels and rooms took time though. From above, Dirk watched as the Sky King sat there silently. However, inwardly, he was counting as each second went by. Currently, Spite was still dormant. He didn't know how long she was going to take to recover, but so long as she was asleep, he would have to do things the old-fashioned way. Pandora told him to count out 12 minutes. That's how long it would take her to activate everything she needed to. And when Dirk counted the 12th minute, he immediately reached for the rest of the mechanisms and turned them on. Just like that, the Sky King's dozens of systems were activated. The entire ship momentarily trembled before calming. However, the tremble was a little violent, catching the attention of many. Now, Dirk and Pandora were on a clock. Thankfully, half the work was done. After activating everything, Dirk moved towards the locks, deactivating all of them. However, not all the locks could be so easily disengaged. There was one lock that detached the power cores of the Sky King from the facility and placed it in a state of complete independence. Even now Dirk could see the large conduits attached to the ship. These conduits were the main tether between the ship and the facility. To get rid of this tether and completely isolate the airship would require admin level authority, something only the overseer of this facility could authorize. That overseer was a tier 7, and as soon as Dirk tried to disengage the lock, that person would know. At least, that was if he did it the normal way. Because they didn't want to directly alert that person, Exos prepared a scrambler. This processor would overwhelm the security enchantment, not hacking or destroying it, but rendering it unresponsive and ineffective. It wasn't unlike a DOS attack. Dirk placed that scrambler against the terminal, and the lock was target. This time, the processor took an entire minute to succeed. Because the attacks of the processor were something never before seen in this world, there were no enchantments that could defend against it. However, the power of the enchantments was still an issue, and to brute force them required more time and processing power. In the end, though, everything worked as expected. Just like that, the lock was lifted, and the tether was detached, popping off the ship. By this time, though, more attention had been caught. Although nothing was visible, the Sky King created very clear magical disturbances. It was like a jet booting up its engine within a closed hangar. It wasn't exactly quiet for magical senses. Dirk suddenly thought that, if the overseer of this place were decisive enough, then he would likely lock down the entire facility soon. And just as he had the thought, alarms blared. Alert. Alert. Unauthorized operation procedures detected. Prepare for imminent lockdown and inspection. A voice echoed through the facility. At the same time, all the secure doors shut and locked themselves. At the same time, Dirk felt the fluctuation of a tier 7. The overseer was here. HM, a competent leader. Time to leave. He let out a small breath. With all the locks disengaged and the Sky King powered up, there was nothing stopping it from flying. It all depended on Pandora's ability to operate it alongside the processors built to help her. However, Pandora was the only one on the ship. On the other hand, he was locked inside the facility, but he was not intending to board. Grabbing and equipping more processors, he began to crack the forced lockdowns and make his way out. He also completely avoided the Tier 7 that was trying to make his way over. Then, he suddenly heard an explosion. Boom. The entire roof of the hangar was blasted open, revealing the bright sky above. That's when the Sky King rose beyond the structures that rooted it to the ground. It took to the air, rising slowly before suddenly exploding with power and shooting out of the hangar. Several structures below it shattered as it separated from its nest. After that, it flew off. Dirk watched it leave before continuing out. Who dares to steal the Sky King? An enraged bellow erupted, shaking the entire facility. At the same time, a massive wave of air mana exploded from the Tier 7. With Dirk's senses, he could clearly see the source of that outrageous mana shoot into the sky. Then, it flew off, obviously in pursuit of the airship. But if it could so easily be caught, then the Sky King would have never been worth stealing anyway. Dirk didn't worry about it, moving to leave the facility. 
He and Pandora already had a predetermined rendezvous point. In fact, Exos was already there. He would be the last to arrive. The walls of the city weren't far, but a commotion had been caused. As a result, everything was locked down. Of course, that didn't stop Dirk from simply slipping through the gates. Nobody could see him, no security enchantment could stop him, so he was completely unhindered. However, as he was making his way out above ground, he suddenly saw a fluctuation. There was a faint figure hidden within the folds of space, one standing in place. Dirk frowned and stopped without being noticed, analyzing the mana of the person in front of him. He could see their figure, but no details. Instead, what he was focused on was the mana, specifically its usage, and the technique he saw that concealed this unknown person's presence made his grip tighten. It seems there are still rats in the city. I thought you all were eradicated by my mother. Looks like one slipped through the net. Dirk spoke hatefully, his aura flowing around his fingertips unconsciously as he revealed his presence. After a few seconds, the concealment around that unknown figure also lifted. It revealed a middle-aged man who was smiling. Well, if it isn't Harbinger 8, to think you'd show up so suddenly like this. You've been missing for quite a while. The man spoke and Dirk saw Aura move around his arms as well. He was far more sensitive to it now, and he could instantly tell that this man was a rank 6. His magic was at the same standard, tier 6, which allowed him to utilize the dark concealment technique that Dirk had also once learned. It brought back unhappy memories from that godforsaken mountain. Of course, this man wasn't one that Dirk knew, but that didn't matter. Dirk's shoulders rolled forward as he squared with the man. He stood taller than him who looked to be around 40. It looked like Dirk was looking down on him, and that wasn't far from the truth. Then, in Dirk's hand appeared the Sword of Dissonance. That man, the assassin, also equipped his weapon, one that spewed dark mana and blurred its figure. He smiled even further. I'll be glad to take you back to Azura. He's been looking for you for a while now. He's been doing a shit job then. Well, he couldn't even keep little poor me in his mountain, so he naturally couldn't find me if I didn't want him to. Please, stop trying to drown me in arrogance. You couldn't fathom the tip of his powers, let alone evade him. Your presence here has already been reported. There's nowhere to run. Not that you can with me here. The assassin walked forward with a derisive smile, as if Dirk's very presence was humorous. He didn't have the slightest hint of urgency. It was like he was facing a toddler. On the other hand, Dirk was almost fuming. He wasn't raging at the assassin's words. They almost didn't register in his mind. He was simply hateful. Seeing this assassin, this Azura, seemed to bring all the hate within him to the surface. He didn't even realize he could be this maddened by someone. Unconsciously, his body heated up as mana pulsed through his veins with wild abandon. Underneath his skin, all his elements were churning, going from fire to lightning to darkness before hardening into metal and repeating the cycle. It was chaotic. But all that chaos was merely fuel for his body, like a reactor. And none of it could be seen beyond his skin. His mana body contained everything, not giving any accurate indication of his strength or the commotion going on within. For a while, the two were silent as they stared at each other. The only sound that could be heard was Dirk's heavy breathing. Then, he let out one last breath before going completely silent. The assassin barely noticed the oddity when Dirk moved. He was just standing there waiting for Dirk to make a move. When he suddenly did, Dirk's hand twisted just slightly before moving forward, and the tip of his sword, as it sailed toward the assassin's body, let out a glowing line of golden aura. It drew a tangible streak in the air, and the mere sight of it made the assassin fascinated. He felt that it was more beautiful than anything else, and he didn't feel the slightest threat from it. It was like Dirk wasn't even attacking him. He truly felt that Dirk was nothing more than a toddler swinging a toy sword, and it all felt like it was in slow motion. He saw Dirk lunging toward him, but his movement didn't look any faster than a walk, so he decided to move his own sword in retaliation. But when he tried, he felt like he couldn't move at all. No, he could move, just that it was painfully slow. That's when he realized what was wrong. At that moment, his vision exploded. Boom. A veil of darkness enveloped him and he felt oppressive gravity crush his body, making him several times heavier. All the dark mana in his body was exiled from the area. He couldn't feel the slightest ability to cast magic, 
as if he hadn't spent most of his life learning to be a dark mage. His entire body, all his senses, and what seemed like his very soul, were all overwhelmed. He felt like he couldn't resist, and that wasn't even considering the fact that he wasn't able to react to Dirk's strike. And he watched as the sword sailed across his body. Shing. It slashed through, Dirk stopping at the end of the strike. Behind him, the assassin was frozen, his eyes going empty. Then, his body trembled. Boom. He directly exploded, his entire being blown into countless bits before disintegrating under the power of Dirk's domain. All that was left was a black streak of ash left on the floor below. Who? Huh. Dirk let out a long breath of black fog that sparked with lightning. He then straightened his body before storing his sword. There was no need to make that man feel pain. That wasn't enough to vent his hatred, nor did he deserve that level of effort. Simply wiping him from existence was enough. He would receive treatment no different from an animal, being dispatched with ease. Of course, Dirk wasn't casual with that blow. It utilized just about every strength he had gained during his advancement. If he had to measure it in the amount of energy it took to do so, it would be close to around a third. While it was impressive for a mere tier, five like him to obliterate a rank in tier six with a mere third of his energy, Dirk felt like it wasn't enough. That man was middle-aged, probably having been stationed at this facility as a spy for many years. It was no doubt because he could provide no real value as a combatant, having reached the end of his talent long ago. Dirk knew there were others at the same level that were much stronger, ones that he might not be able to beat. Still, this was just a taste of his power. He still had to refine his strength, which would take time and trial. This was merely the beginning of a much longer road. Like that, Dirk walked off within the concealment of his domain, not a single soul noticing him or the battle that lasted no more than half a second. He left the facility before making his way out of the city. The Sky King was already long gone, having left that pursuing Tier 7 in the dust. However, long gone meant that it was dozens of miles away, beyond the horizon. It would take Dirk some time to make his way over there. Outside the gates, Dirk sighed before getting ready to take off. Before he did, however, he stopped and looked at a particular point in space. His eyes narrowed as he continued to observe. He could barely sense the faintest indicator that someone was there. It was clear that their stealth abilities outstripped his, but this also meant that his observational abilities had risen to a shocking degree. Still, for a moment, he thought it was another Azura. My goodness. You can even pick me out now. It seems I truly have become complacent over time. With those words, Dirk saw his mother appear, and his hostility vanished. She was smiling right at him. It seemed his stealth couldn't yet fool the senses of his mother, a rank 7. He knew her tear was lower than her rank, so she shouldn't be able to sense him through mana. But the abilities of anima were even more mysterious when taken to a higher level so he was sure that she had methods that he couldn't yet fathom. Dirk dispelled his stealth as well, scratching his head with a smile. We did it. M.M., I heard. Master Shang won't be happy. Wait, that was Master Shang? Dirk's eyes suddenly widened. Master Shang was one of the renowned alchemy teachers at the academy. He was the one who created the potion that Geralt stole and force-fed him. Master Shang was known for being the unlucky victim of Geralt's thieving hands, and he was also known for having deep pockets. The man was supposedly rich beyond belief, but Dirk had never heard the details. It seems that his background was greater than he thought. Master Shang was actually the tier 7 overseer of this facility. Well, if he had the skill necessary to create a potion that could evolve one's blood, then he surely had the expertise to work on the Sky King. After all, not everything strictly involved enchanting. Alchemy and forging were also major parts of the Sky King's construction. That's what made it a marvel of magical engineering. Dirk could barely hold back a laugh. And then, he suddenly looked back up at the sky. He and his mother both reflexively activated their stealth, disappearing from view. Then, Master Shang appeared, flying through the air. Just like many years ago, he was the same short and fat man that Dirk had known. He hadn't changed a bit. In fact, it looked like he gained more weight. Perhaps since Geral wasn't there, he didn't have to run around as much in fury, so he wasn't burning any calories. Damn it. I bet that slimy bastard Geral did this, haunting me even after disappearing. Huh? Whoever you are, you will pay dearly for this. The Emperor will not let you go. Ominous.
Dirk mumbled as Master Shang disappeared over the walls. It seems you need to leave soon. I won't keep you, but I still want a proper goodbye. Cecilia appeared again, as did Dirk. Then, she walked over and wrapped him in a hug. He was much bigger now, but he had no problem bending over a bit to return the embrace. They hugged like that for a while, Cecilia whispering into his ear. Keep yourself safe, okay? You're throwing yourself into deep waters. Trickery doesn't always work, and those it doesn't work against are people who can end you before you can even put up a fight. So please, come back to me. I don't want to be a mother who outlives her child. I will. Dirk responded to her heavy words. From now on, they were entering enemy territory, intent on stealing unfathomably powerful weapons from under the noses of world powers. It would be the furthest thing from easy, because to operate at that level meant that they were liable to clash with the most powerful people in the world. They would need to play their cards perfectly in order to avoid that and choose manageable battles. If it were anyone other than Dirk and Pandora, they would die before they could even start. But because Dirk was confident in both his own skill and Pandora's scheming mind, he found the risk acceptable. But one wrong move and everything could end in an instant. They would be riding a delicate line, which was exactly what Cecilia was worried about. Dirk couldn't comfort her much. The only thing he could do was return. That was the only real assurance he could give, just as he had done when returning from Azura's Mountain and, more recently, the Dwarven Haven. This time, he would probably be gone for a while longer. So he took his time saying goodbye. I'll be back. I know. Just make sure it's in one piece. Cecilia smiled as she separated from Dirk, combing back his hair before stepping back. Go on now. I don't want to jeopardize your plans. M.M. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, my child. With one last look, Dirk's domain activated, shrouding his figure and removing all traces of his existence. And after standing there for a while, Cecilia also disappeared, her face resolute. 